All right, welcome back to the stupidest podcast. This is your host Justin Vandy Venter, and it's just me tonight, guys. Um, this is going to be a new podcast segment, kind of that I'm going to be just doing by myself. Uh, Roddy might come in and help occasionally, but uh, this is going to be just a deep dive into the comedians that we dedicate to. I think that we don't do enough explanation or talking about the comedian that we dedicate to because the people that we do dedicate to are unique and special comedians and I think we should definitely learn a little bit more about them because almost every one that we talk about I absolutely love. I am a connoisseur of comedy. I live, eat, breathe the comedians. I listen to their podcast 24-7 at work. I mean, I just dive into this stuff and I love it. And I hope you do too. If not, this is probably not going to be for you, but I hope it is because these are phenomenal artists of their time and still today. So, um, I'm just gonna, it's probably going to be a weekly podcast until I catch up to where we're at. So I'm just starting with the very first comedian that we dedicated to which is Norm MacDonald, the late, great Norm MacDonald. Um, so I'm going di- to dive into him, and then I'm just going to keep going from week to week until I catch up, and then I'll, be, I'll probably release this podcast every, every opposite week of our big main podcast. So thanks for joining. Um, I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to do my very best to see how this goes. I'm... I like being on the mic, so and I hope you enjoy listening to me talk. But uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to dive into him for a little bit. Um, just kind of dig through his Wikipedia page, tell you little bits and pieces, things that I found interesting. Um, but I'm definitely going to tell you with all these comedians that I go into, I'm going to tell you their entire work, everything that they went into, because I think it should be said at least one you know once to show how much work that these guys actually did and a lot of these guys they didn't just do stand up like norm did more than just stand up he he was a comedian he was a uh an actor he was a writer he was a sound uh, a voice voice actor he did a lot of voices for cartoons and stuff so I'll I'll talk about that, Um, but I'm definitely going to tell you their entire work that's been released. So, um, yeah, we'll get into that. Um, But I'm going to start out with their early life, where where they were born and stuff like that, and then talk a little bit about their career and a little bit about their personal life, if I can find anything interesting about that. And uh, we'll go from there. So, Norm MacDonald. Norm MacDonald, he he was born in Quebec City, uh, Canada. Quebec City, Quebec of Canada. He was born on October 17th, 1959. Um, He uh, he had a rough go of it when he first started out. He first performed in in comedy was at the, the Yuck Yuck in Ottawa in 1985. He hated it and never thought he would come come back again, but uh, the owner th- saw something in him and uh, convinced him to come back, and his confidence eventually grew, and then uh, he kept going on a regular basis to do open mics, and his comedy grew, and I mean, we know what he is today, I mean, what he became today, but yeah, he he didn't start out real great. He didn't think he was going to do comedy, Um but and then in uh, 1986 he performed in Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal and was heralded uh, by the Montreal Gazette one of the country's hottest upcoming com- comics. And then in 1990 he performed on Star Search. He then also appeared on Letterman and Dave. Dave said when he was on Letterman if he could have had Norm, he would have had Norm on every week. Um. He said there's something special about that guy. But then he was, uh, after that, he was later on, he uh, was hired on as a writer for Roseanne sitcom. 
and he worked he worked as a writer on that sitcom from 1992 till 1993 and quit the Roseanne sitcom to join what we know as uh Norm on SNL. He did SNL from 1993 to 1998 doing impressions, but in the 20th season of SNL was the start and birth of his hilarious weekend update spoofs, the news segment. Um, he did the news segment, and it, I think it's one of the greatest bits that he ever created on SNL. Um, but he was released from SNL, fired, I guess you would say, let go, because they didn't think he was funny. But we all <laughs> can see where uh, where that led. He's talked about it many, many of times. If you look it, look it up, he'll he'll tell you about everything that uh, went on there. Um, he 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 ripped on SNL's president many of times <laughs> that I've heard about it. But uh, yeah, Norm Norm was married. Let's see here. Sorry about this. I'm just kind of winging this. This is something I just kind of wanted to do. But uh, Norm married uh, Connie Valancourt, with whom he had a he has a son, Dylan, which was born. He was born in 1993, and the couple separated in 1999, and divorced later that same year. Um, he he had a gambling addition addict. A gambling addiction, which initiated by a, was initiated by a six-figure craps table win in Atlantic Atlantic City. Sorry, <laughs> um, which in an appearance on uh, the WTF podcast with Mark Marin, uh, he t he told Mark Marin that on the story, Mc McDonald revealed that uh, he lost all of his money three times in his lifetime. The large amount that he lost at once was $400,000. Um, Norm was a big poker player. Um, he loved the game of poker. Um, as a poker player, he, uh, his best live result was cashing for 20000 with a $1,000 buy-in at the Bellagio Weekly Tournament. In July of 2006. And then in the 2007 World Series of Poker. He came in the 20th place out of 827 people. The buy-in for that was uh, 3,000. Oh no, I'm sorry. In the $3,000 No Limit Texas Hold'em event. Uh, he won 14,608. Which sounds like a lot of money. But when you look back at his largest loss of 400,000 that's just one loss that he had these are just a couple of wins that he had so sounds like the guy lost more than he won but uh he frequently played in live games as well as online poker um he he said uh he would play up to 20 online limit hold'em games at once when online poker was a thing. He said when the online poker became illegal. It probably saved his life. Because uh, he was just on a grind. And it wouldn't even sleep. He said sometimes. He had 20 games going at once. I could see it. I mean I loved online poker. So I can definitely understand that. But uh, never got that bad. Um, some big influences for him. Uh, Norm was a big... Com he loved comedy, you know, probably just, I mean, probably more than me, but he was a very big student of comedy. Um, some of the comedians that he looked up to was Bob New, Bob Newhart, Sam Kinison, Roddy Nagerfield, Dennis Miller. I thought Dennis Miller was a funny one that he named because people forget how funny Dennis Miller was back in the early 90s, late 80s. Dennis Miller was a huge comedian. Um, and I haven't seen much of his stuff lately, but man, that guy was hilarious back in the day. If you don't know who Dennis Miller was, he was, for those of you younger guys, I remember Joe Dirt. He was the, 
He was the radio host on Joe Dirt that told the story when Joe Dirt was telling his story on the radio. That's That was Dennis Miller. So, but yeah, Norm thought he was hilarious. And then he was also uh, a big fan of the, the writers Leo Tolstoy and Antoine Chakova. I don't know who those two guys are. But um, when Norm was coming up through the system, he wished that there would have been a bigger comedy system in Canada at the time. He said there wasn't much around back then. So Because he, he wished he could have stayed home in his home country a little bit more than what he did. But yeah. Um, one of the other big things that he did that I found interesting was in 1998, he co-wrote and starred in Dirty Work featuring Chris Farley. And the reason I found that interesting was because that was Chris Farley's last work before he died. And uh, I, I saw an interview with uh, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, and all the, that whole crew. And Norm wasn't fully a part of that crew, but he was a part of that crew. Um, when they they shot something and they were asking what needed to be funny and they wrote something and or they heard from the writers, Adam Adam said we'd look at Norm. Norm was the funny guy. If he said it was funny, it got put in. He said he was kind of the leader of the group for if it was funny or not, which I find hilarious because there were some big comedians and I mean they had obviously Chris Farley. Adam was, a, I mean, Adam's hilarious, but I mean, he wasn't a huge com comic, stand-up comic, but they also had uh, Chris Rock. Chris Rock could go down as one of the greatest comedians of all time. I mean, he's in the GOAT conversation, but they'd all look at Norm. If that gives you any kind of reality of how good Norm was as a comedian, I think he he's definitely easily as one of the best comedians of our time. And it, when I found that he passed away, that it hit me pretty hard because I really liked Norm. Norm was up there for me. I know I don't talk about him as much, but when somebody like that in this line of work passes away, it's tough. I mean that that was a that was a big name and a, a guy that I followed a lot in his career. So I mean it. It, I, I could definitely go for another 20 years of Norm MacDonald performing because right? I think the guy still had plenty of comedy that he hasn't created yet. So, but yeah, um, Norm, if you didn't know, he, I guess I've already told you that he's passed away, but he died on September 14th of last year, 2021. McDonald died from an acute leukemia that not many people knew about. I've heard some of his best friends go, I didn't even know that he had a, had the disease. Um, he died at the hospital at Pas Pasadena, California at the age of 61. He, uh, he was diagnosed with the leukemia nine years prior. And I don't think very many people knew. So... He wasn't he wasn't a guy that showed his weakness, I'll say that much. But um if you don't know who Norm is, go check the guy out. Cause he is hilarious. <laughs> he was funny, very genuine, and he's one of the few guys in the business that I see didn't care who he talked to how big their name was, he was going to tell them how it was. He didn't, he didn't hide his emotions ever. He didn't back down from a joke, no matter who it was. And a lot of people, some of his comedy was so funny that some people didn't even get it because it was over their heads. So to be a big follower of some of his most hilarious stuff, you have to be, a comic in your own mind to get it. But other, I mean, 
you're still going to get all of his comedy. The dude was hilarious. But he's one of the, I wouldn't say a heckler, but he could come back at a heckler better than anybody I probably have ever seen. I mean, there's, I know there's more out there, but he's one of the best because he was so quick and so fast on his feet at coming back at somebody. Um, if you really want to watch some great clips of him, watch some of his Norm Macdonald coming back at hecklers. It's some of the funniest, quickest, brightest things you'll ever see and go, wow, that guy was fast. He, uh, how he come up with some of this stuff just blew my mind. You know how when somebody says something to you and you're like, you're in the car ride home and you think, man, I wish I would have said that. Norm did say it. He said it right off the get-go. He, he didn't have to think about it. it. It was there. Boom. That quick. That's how fast that guy was at coming up with a line. And I think it would have been great to sit down and talk with him. It'd be great as a comedian to sit down and be like, hey, can you help me with this joke? Because that's a guy that probably could break something down for you really quick. And that's one of the greatest things about comedy, too, is when you get done with a set and you sit down. The comedian, You know what? You should try this or this would be better. I think Norm was one of those guys that would, from what I've heard, I haven't experienced, obviously I haven't experienced because I never sat and talked with him. But from what I've heard, he was a guy that would help you and say, you know what, this would make this bit a little better or that. And from what I've heard from other stories was he was a genuinely nice guy to every, I mean, if you were a dick, he was going to treat you like a dick. But I mean, if you were a nice guy, I've heard multiple comedians come up and go, Norm called me. And said, hey, nice set. I didn't even know Norm who knew who the hell I was. So, I mean, that's pretty cool to get a, a big name like that to reach out and just talk to random people like that. But, um, yeah, I'll get into a little bit of his career here now. And uh, for comedy, he only had um, three big specials. He had an album in 2006 called Ridiculous. It was a sketch album. Great, funny, hilarious. I mean, I could keep... There's not. There's only so many words you can say, but the guy... He's a guy that can make you cry laugh. He's that funny. In 2011, he did a stand-up special called Me Doing Stand-Up. <laughs> His comedy was very simple like that, though. I mean, he can make something funny out of something just completely simple. And then in 2017, he came up with a stand-up special called Hitler's Dog, Gossip and Trickery. He did TV series. He started the TV series The Norm Show. He did The Norm Show from 1999 to 2001, which was on air for three seasons, total of 54 episodes with Bruce Helford. And then he uh, did A Minute with Stan Hooper in 2003, which was only one season for 13 episodes with K Barry Kemp. Um, he wrote a book called Based on True Stories, Not a Memoir. It's a comic novel released in 2016. I haven't read the book. I would love to pick it up, actually, and give it a read because that sounds phenomenal. Um, he did talk shows. In 2011, he did the talk show Sports Show with Norm MacDonald, which only aired for nine episodes with Mike Gibson, Lori Joe Hoekstra, and Daniel Kellingson. He did Norm MacDonald Live from 2013 to 2017, which was three seasons for 36 episodes. And then he went on in 2018 to do Norm MacDonald Has a Show. 10 episodes. Norm, you really could have worked on your titles, but I like it. <laughs> um, for films, this guy was in a bunch. Um, 1995, he uh, was in Billy Madison as the role of Frank. 1996, he played The People vs. Larry Flint. He was a network reporter. In 1998 was the movie that I told you about with Chris Farley, Dirty Work. He played Mitch Weaver. Um, 
1998, he also played Dr. Doolittle. He was the voice of the dog, Lucky. In 1999, he was in Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. He was the bartender. Um, also in 1999, he was on Man on the Moon. He played Michael Richards. In 2000, he played Screwed. He was in Screwed, where he played Wilford Fillmore. Also in 2000, he played the animal. He was a mob member. Just a cameo. Um, in 2001, he played in Dr. Doolittle 2, where he voiced Lucky again. In 2005, he played in Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. Or Deuce Bigelow, European Gigolo. Where he played Earl Mc McManus. Mc McManus. <laughs> in 2006, he was on Farce. Of the Penguins. He joined. Joined Twosome's Penguin. Is what he played. He was a voice of. And then Dr. Doolittle 3. In 2006. He was the voice of Lucky again. 2007. He was in Senior Skip Day. Where he played Mr. Rigetti. Also in 2007. It was Christmas is here again. Buster the Fox. He was the voice of Buster the Fox. 2008, Dr. Doolittle, Tale of the Chief. He was voice of Lucky again. Also in 2008, he was on Flight Before Christmas, where he was the voice of Julius. 2009, he was in Funny People as himself as a cameo. 2009, he also played Dr. Doolittle again as the voice of Lucky and Dr. Doolittle Million Dollar Mutts. 2010, he was in Grown Ups as Geezer, a cameo. Hollywood in 2010, he was also in Hollywood and Wine as Sid Blostain. In 2011, he was in Adam Sandler's movie Jack and Jill as Fun Bucket. It was a cameo. In 2012, Adventures of Panda Warrior, he was King Leo, the voice of King Leo. In 2012, he was also in Vampire Dog. He was the voice of Fang. In 2012, he was also in Outback. The Outback, he was the voice of Quint. In 2014, The Seventh Dwarf, he was the voice of Burner the Dragon. In 2015, he was in Ridiculous Six. He Nugget Customer, he did a cameo as the Nugget Customer. In 2017, he did Treasure Hounds. He was the voice of Skipper. In 2019, he was in Claws, where he did the voice of Mogans. In 2021, back home again, he did the voice of Grandpa's. So, like I said, he was in a lot of movies, um, and we're still going. But I just wanted to, that dude did a lot of voiceover acting, a lot of cameos, and then he also had some main parts. And then he was a writer in a lot of these, too. But also in television, in 1990, he did Star Search. 1991, he did One Night Stand. 1992, he did The Dennis Miller Show. 1992 to 1993, he was, like, like I said, he was the writer on Roseanne. Um, 1993, he did Jackie Thomas Show. 93 to 98, and a little bit of 99, he was on SNL. In 95, he did Larry Sanders Show. In 96 and 2000, The Drew Carey Show. He did Simon Tate and himself. In 97, he did News Radio. In 99 and 2001, he did The Norm Show. In 2000 to 2017, or 2000 and, and in 2017, he was on Family Guy doing voice work. 2003, A Minute with Stan Hooper. 2004, Oliver Bean. In 2005, he did The Fairly Odd Parents and Back to Norm. 2007 to 2009, he was on My Name is Earl. He was Little Chubby for two episodes in those. In 2008, the comedy he was on the Comedy Central roast of Bob Saget, the late great Bob Saget, another guy that passed away. 2010 to 2018, The Middle. In 2011, he was on uh, High Stakes Poker. <laughs> and then 2014 to 2020, he was on Mike Tyson Mysteries. 
In 2015, he was Real Rob, The Last Comic Standing, and Sunnyside. In 2006, he did the 4th Canadian Screen Awards. 2016 to 2018, Skylanders Academy. 2017, Girl Boss. 2017 to 2022, The Orville. That was, I wonder if that show's still going, because that was a great show. And then 2018, the reboot of Roseanne. He was a consultant producer. A constant worker in comedy, in all areas of comedy. And I think with all these comedians, I'm going to talk about the couple of things that I wish or would like to have that they have or the gifts that they have. I wish I could be a writer as good as Norm. Norm was a phenomenal writer. I wish I could be as quick-witted because the guy was fast. I mean, if you're thinking of like a gunfight, there's nobody with a quicker draw than Norm MacDonald. And it really sucks that the dude passed away because I think comedy lost a big hitter with Norm. Um, but yeah, um, if you don't know who he is, if you've never seen his stuff, you must be living under a rock because the guy was in everything. And I guarantee you, he was in things that you didn't even know he was in or had a part of. But I'll tell you, if you did and you laughed in that show, it was probably because of him. Norm is a phenomenal comedian, and it really sucks that he's not with us anymore. So, I think that's going to be about it for this episode. I mean, these are going to be short, not as long as our big episodes, but I'm just going to kind of talk a little more in depth about these comedians, and some probably longer than others, because I'll know more about them. Or I have more to say about him because I I know, like I said, know more about him. But uh, I have a little bit more of a feeling for these these some of these comedians touch me a little bit more. <laughs> like Norm was, he's one of my faves. If if you want a good laugh, go look up some of his stand up. Go look at some of his comebacks. Because he is one of the greatest in comebacks. But, uh, yeah, Norm MacDonald. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, once again, this is with the Stupidest Podcast. Uh, one of your hosts, Justin Vandeventer here. Um, <clears throat> you can check out our main podcast on pretty much everything. I mean, probably where you're listening right now. But you can also listen to us on... Uh, YouTube now, so if you go subscribe there, you can get every episode on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. Eventually, hopefully, get on TikTok if I can get that going. There's only so many hours in the day. Um, but you can always, always look us up at www.thestupidestpodcast.com. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Um, check us out. Subscribe. Give us a rating. It, it all helps. Um, mostly we do this just well, for our enjoyment. Our, our main podcast we use is pretty much as like therapy for us. But uh, we also get, uh, we do interviews with other guests and stuff like that. But this is just a spinoff of that what I wanted to do because I I think the comedians deserve a little bit more than what we do for the last two minutes of our main episodes. I just wanted to deep dive into them a little bit more and tell you a little bit more about them and share. Because I think you sh if I want people to become more students of comedy. Because there's so much more to it than what you guys probably see. Um, but yeah. Norm MacDonald, seriously. He, he could be on my... 
on on my Mount Rushmore of comedians. He's up there. He's a great great comedy, great comedian out of, of all areas, all areas, film, stand up, writing, everything. He was an all around whole comedian. Like I don't think there was any point of his life that wasn't comedy. So check him out. But yeah. Check out the stupidest podcast, I guess, too, as well, man. I mean, look us up. I hope you enjoyed this. I I hope I get better at this. This is, my, like I said, my first episode of doing this solo and just talking. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Um, so, yeah. Have a good one. Music.